My name is Chad Proudfoot, and I'm on the faculty here at West Virginia University with the WVU Extension Service. I serve uh, as the Extension Service Historian and Archivist. Uh, my office is down at our State 4-H camp at Jackson's Mill. Um, and so my focus is often about Appalachian history and heritage. I'm very pleased to serve as a member uh, of the Pearl S. Buck Advisory Committee helping to represent the university in the new partnership that we've been talking about. And so pleased to have some guests with us today for this concurrent session from the Pearl S. Buck Writing Center who are going to be leading this session on Pearl Buck's husband. So first we have Susie Woodland who will be uh, telling us about John Lossing Buck global agriculturalist, science, and writer. She will be followed by Jean Silvernail, who will be telling us about Richard J. Walsh, publisher, activist, partner, and father. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. What a pleasure it is to be among everyone so devoted to Pearl Buck's journey. So let's begin her journey as a wife. And we'll start with husband number one, John Lossing Buck. John Lossing Buck was primarily known to the American public as the husband of Pearl S. Buck. It is the intent of this presentation to affirm Oops, steal that from you. Oh, sure. your wife. <laughs> not only the talents of Pearl S. Buck, but also that of her first husband, John Lossing Buck. The couple may have thought and worked in different spheres. However, their accomplishments in their individual fields were equally significant. Pearl might not have written The Good Earth without the intimate glimpse she gained into the lives of the Chinese farmers as she journeyed with Lossing during the first years of their marriage. The paths they took in subsequent years brought them to a fork in the road, which would eventually send them on separate journeys. The global journey of John Lossing Buck began on November 27, 1890 in LaGrange, Dutchess County, New York. The son of Vincent Morgan and Grace Buck, he followed in his father's footsteps as a farmer and began his love of the land. He inherited the name of his grandfather, John Lossing Buck. However, since everyone addressed his grandfather as John, his grandson became known as Lossing. Lossing began his education at the Lockwood School in Pleasant Valley, New York. He attended Cornell University, graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Agricultural Science in 1914, a Master of Science in 1925, and a PhD in Agricultural Economics in 1933. After graduating from Cornell in 1914, Lossing was employed by the Department of Correction in New York City, teaching farming to delinquents at the Hampton, New York Reformatory Farms. Lossing first developed an interest in the agriculture of China as an undergraduate graduate student at Cornell while attending Saturday morning meetings of an organization called the China Study Group. The group was sponsored by a man named John Reisner, a graduate student, who was later appointed the dean of the Agricultural College at Nanking University as well as an advocate of Lossing's. Lossing shared this observation. Chinese agriculture is almost as different from European agriculture as is Chinese civilization from European civilization. He envisioned a revolutionary innovation to the ancient farming practices of China by introducing the modern farming practices of the West. Even though he was not an ordained clergyman, he applied to the Presbyterian Board of Foreign Mission who recognized his academic credentials in agricultural science. They assigned him as an agricultural missionary to Nansu Shou in a poor wheat farming region in Anhui Province, China. He entered China by way of Shanghai in December of 1915 and immediately traveled to Nanking to participate in mandatory language classes to attempt to master the Chinese language, a challenge which would forever elude him. Lossing arrived in China at a very opportune time, the post-revolution period, when the intellectuals of China were eager to modernize, believing that the future belonged to those who could successfully 
embrace Western ideas, and adapt them to existing Chinese agricultural technology. Lossing was warmly welcomed by the Chinese as they accepted and admired his training as an agriculturalist. His assignments in Nansu Show were varied. For, from experimenting with new seeds, which he ultimately introduced to the rural farmers, to conducting brief courses to expand their knowledge of the new agricultural technology. He taught them how best to combine the new theories to existing agricultural practices and expand their crop yields. In addition, he conducted agricultural experiments while engaged in field extension work. In July of 1916, while spending part of the summer in the mountain resort of Kuling, he wrote of this event to his mother. I met a nice girl from Virginia who had spent all but the last four years in China. Later, he would add in another letter, she is a peach of a girl. By 1917, he and Pearl Comfort Seidenstricker, the daughter of American missionaries, corresponded throughout the winter. In the spring, Lossing purchased a first-class train ticket to visit Pearl in Zhenjiang. He said of the extravagance, it was well worth it. Pearl announced to her parents that she and Lossing wished to marry. The announcement was met with deep reservation by her parents, united in disapproval of this farmer with the farmer's education, marrying their intellectual daughter. Regardless of her parents' disapproval, the couple married in the Seidenstricker's garden in Changking on May 30th, 1917. Her mother Carrie remembered with some foreboding, 37 years before when her parents voiced disapproval to her marriage with Absalom. Shortly after her marriage to Lossing, Pearl wrote to her college roommate, Emma Edmonds. My dearest Emma, I am happier every day. Lossing is all any woman could wish him to be and makes me completely happy. He is so thoroughly good and so fine and true. The newlyweds traveled the rural countryside of northern China, gathering information for Lossing's research, he riding a bicycle and she in a curtain sedan chair. Pearl chose to move the curtain aside to provide her a view of the crowds staring as she passed as they had never seen a white woman before. Lossing had never mastered the Chinese language and Pearl became instrumental as his interpreter and translator. Lossing had been hired by Nanking University in 1920 to establish a department of agricultural economics in the College of Agriculture and Forestry. He also served as acting dean from 1920 to 1922 and indeed department head through 1934. In 1920, the Bucks welcomed a baby girl who Pearl described as seraphically beautiful and they named her Caroline Grace after her mother and sister respectively and they called her Carol. The family moved to their new home on the campus of Nanking University. Lawson released his first publication in 1924, an economic and social survey of 102 farms in Wuhu in Anhui province. Over the next 12 years, he organized his students in gathering data from 2,866 farms to eventually be published in Chinese farm economy. One of Lawson's students, R.T. Tsui, wrote a dedication to him, and in it he said, Professor Buck often mentioned what he termed a truth. If you want to improve it, you should do surveys and studies into it. Mr. Tsui explained, a rule of Professor Buck was that every student who took a course in farm management must go back to the rural region in his old home and do surveys of conditions of at least 100 farm households. In 1925, Lossing published a report of the social and economic survey of 150 rural families in Yan Sham and Hai Bay, and the Bucks returned to Cornell, both working toward their respective master's degrees. 
While they remained in Ithaca following commencement from Cornell, they enjoyed the company of Pearl's brother Edgar. Edgar had gained prominence in the field of public health with a specialty in epidemiology. He had been appointed the director of the research division of the Millbank Memorial Fund, a prominent public health foundation. He engaged Lossing in debates as to whether the greatly respected research methods employed by Lossing, gathering data systematically in the field, analyzing the data, and organizing the results to study Chinese agriculture might also be applicable for Edgar to modify and utilize in his research regarding rural health issues. Pearl's focus during the time at Cornell was divided between her academic life and the care of Carol, who had exhibited dramatic developmental delays beginning in her earliest years. The stress on Pearl and Lossing was intensifying as Carol's condition remained undiagnosed and her behavior was characterized by observers as bizarre. Pearl and Lossing were becoming deeply conflicted as to the cause of Carol's condition, as well as how to move forward with any decisions regarding her care. During this time, even after a consultation at the Mayo Clinic, no diagnosis was forthcoming. All Pearl was told that nothing could be done. The only possible benefit suggested for Carol was the company of another child of normal development. The Bucks adopted another daughter, named her Janice, and the family returned to Nanking. By 1927, Lossing's research was being adversely affected by alarming unrest in China with incursions of the Kuomintang and communists as they battled for dominance. The family, experiencing life-threatening dangers, could no longer remain in China and retreated to the bucolic beauty of Onzen, Japan. Lossing was able to save his statistical survey manuscript and insisted that no one interrupt his work between 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the afternoon when he <coughs> focused exclusively on reviewing and refining his farm research data which had been collected in the field in China. One of the most destructive natural disasters in the 20th century occurred when, in the spring of 1931, the Yangtze River overflowed its banks and dikes, flooding an area the size of New York State, killing over two million people. It certainly confirmed Pearl's observation that China's peasants face always face a hard, precarious existence. The Bucks were introduced to American aviator Charles Lindbergh, who arrived in China to provide aid for trapped farmers who he airlifted to safety. He also provided aerial surveys of the flooded regions. The event affected Pearl and Lossing in two very different ways. Lossing immediately became engaged in a survey of the flooded region and later published in his survey through Nanking University with the National Flood Relief Commission. Again, he compiled detailed data to determine the agricultural and economic impact of the flood. Pearl, on the other hand, was deeply affected personally by the floods as it prevented her from traveling to her father's summer home in Kuling to be at his bedside when he died on August 31st, 1931. She was only able to visit his gravesite in Kuling's Christian Cemetery after the floods receded. The family of the Bucks would be forever changed when the Rockefeller Foundation offered Lossing a grant to expand his survey work in China. The discussion over the details of the agreement required the family to return to the United States. Pearl made the decision to de 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 devote the trip, return trip to finding, as she would say, a suitable institution for Carol. And so she wrote to Emma Edmonds White, I need to find a school for Carol, and I realize I must leave her in some place and my heart is wrenched in two at the thought. She found the Vineland Training School in Vineland, New Jersey, where Carol would be 
most happy. Pearl hired an agent in the United States as she recognized that it was necessary to begin writing in earnest in order to provide an adequate income to support Carol at Vineland. Lossing's salary as an agricultural missionary was insufficient to provide the level of income required for Carol's support. During the visit to the United States, Pearl was informed that her agent had secured an agreement with the John Day Company to publish her book, East Wind, West Wind. Richard Walsh, the president of the John Day Company, agreed to publish her book, and then Mr. Walsh urged her to write another book. The family returned to China, where Pearl completed her next novel in her attic room in their home in Nanking. The novel eventually became known as The Good Earth. Lossing, at the same time, was preparing to have Chinese farm economy published. Pearl would not have had the insight into the life of the rural Chinese farmer, Wang Lung, had she not accompanied Lossing on his journey listening, watching, and interpreting as he compiled statistical data for his agricultural research. The Good Earth was of such great significance to Lossing's work that he cited the Good Earth as his first footnote in Chinese farm economy. The authors, the intellectual and the farmer, published their books within months of each other. Both books were received to great critical acclaim. In 1933, after Ruby and Richard Walsh and Pearl and Lossing Buck ended their sightseeing trip to England, Sweden, Italy, and France, Pearl informed Lossing that the mar their marriage was ended, as well as her intent to move to the United States with Janice. Two years later, in 1935, the final divorce decree was issued, and the 18-year marriage of John Lossing Buck and Pearl Comfort Seidenstricker was legally dissolved. Pearl later married her publisher, Richard Walsh. She and Richard purchased a 52-acre farm in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. They immediately expanded the property to 500 acres of fertile farmland. The thread connecting Pearl and Lossing through the knowledge she assimilated as they traveled the rural farms of China remained unbroken. Pearl Buck was a farmer's wife. Pearl Walsh was a farmer. Lawson remained in China and continued get, gathering statistics for his agricultural research. His contributions to the field of agriculture brought him into very prominent positions both in the United States and China. In 1937, Lawson published the three-volume Land Utilization in China through the international series of the Institute of Pacific Relations. This study of land utilization in rural China included statistical analysis of data from 16,786 farms and 38,256 farm families in 22 provinces in China between the years 1929 and 1933. In the preface to one volume, Lossing offered a special acknowledgement to the late Mr. Edgar Seidenstricker, Pearl's brother of the Millbank Memorial Fund, who had provided a grant of $3,000 for the collection of population data. Edgar was also advisor on the population study and lecturer to the staff on statistical problems. Lossing mentions that Edgar would have written the chapter on population had he not met with an untimely death in 1936. I would like to draw your attention over there on the easel to the facsimile of land utilization in China. And I guarantee the facsimile on foam board bears no relation to the weight of the three volume land utilization in China, which is approximately 25 pounds. That does not gauge its quality, certainly. But the magnificent uh, uh, three volume work now will open to see some of the contents, just very briefly, of land utilization in China. In the volume entitled Statistics, we see statistical lists explaining the effect of famines on farmland, crops of the region, the effects of wind, floods, and drought on the land, 
We even see a survey of the work garments worn by the head of the family representing the affluence of the family. A thumbnail glimpse into the Atlas volume includes maps of the 22 provinces explaining surveys of the land cultivated and irrigated, grave land which had been irrigated, agricultural regions, and aerial photographs of the 16,786 farms. It was acknowledged that these surveys of Chinese agriculture were the most comprehensive ever compiled. In 1939, Lossing became advisor to the Chinese Ministry of Finance during the Sino-Japanese War, directing the transport of tongue oil to repay a United States loan to China. He returned to Nanjing University, which had moved to Chengdu during the Japanese invasion. On October 11, 1941, Lossing married Lo Mei Chung in Chengdu, China, and they had two children, Rosalind Grace and Paul Lossing, born in China and the United States, respectively. In 1944, the Buck family, Lossing, Lo Mei, and Rosalind, prepared to leave their many friends in China. Fate intertwined the lives of the Bucks and the Walshes when the Buck family entered the United States in 1944. Lo Mei Buck became the first Chinese citizen to enter the United States following the repeal of the Chinese Exclusion Act. Ironically, Richard Walsh, the second husband of Pearl Buck, had been the chairman of the committee to repeal the Chinese Exclusion Act. In 1944, Lawson continued his service as chief economist for the National Agricultural Engineering Corporation in China and New York and from 1945 to 1946, he served as the technical advisor of the United States Department of Agriculture in the Office of Foreign Agricultural Relations, organizing the China-United States Agricultural Mission. In 1947, he joined the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations as the chief of the Land and Water Use Branch with headquarters in Washington, D.C., as well as Rome, Italy. During his service with the United Nations, the Buck family moved to Italy. His wife, Lome, became fluent in Italian, aiding Lossing by interpreting and translating Italian as he transacted official business. Just as Pearl had interpreted and translated Chinese so many years before. <coughs> Finally, in 1957, Lawson retired to the family farm in Dutchess County, New York. He remained active even during retirement as he became the specialist for the United States State Department in the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Lawson was unable to maintain a relationship with his daughters after his divorce from Pearl in 1935. Pearl did not communicate with Lossing again until 1959, when she informed him that she had received a diagnosis of Carol's condition. It was called phenylketonuria, or PKU, which she explained to Lossing was a metabolic disorder inherited from both parents. Lossing was encouraged to visit Carol at the Vineland Training School. However, he did not reunite with Janice until 1973 at his home in New York. John Lossing Buck died in Poughkeepsie, New York on September 27, 1975. He is buried in the Pleasant Valley Cemetery in Dutchess County, New York. And now, Pearl Buck's second husband. Richard Wall.